Now, another thing that might be weighing on Biden is his family's legal exposure. During yesterday's Senate hearing, Biden's hatchet man at the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, swore he's going to remain hands off on the investigation. Promised to leave the matter of Hunter Biden in the hands of the U.S. attorney uh, for the District of Delaware, who was appointed uh, in the previous administration, a pledge not to interfere. The U.S. attorney in Delaware has been uh, advised that he has full authority uh, to, to make those kind of uh, referrals that you're talking about or to bring cases in other jurisdictions if he feels it's necessary. But former FBI assistant director and frequent angle guest Chris Swecker, he's not buying it. Eric Garland knows what he's supposed to do. He's the surrogate for the for the administration. It's just a wink and a nod. I, I don't you know, he can pledge that he won't interfere all he wants. But there is no reason why the U.S. attorney in Delaware should be sitting on this case for well over a year. Today is Friday, March 3rd, 2023. Hunter Biden plotted to betray key family business partner, but revenge is at hand. Mom rips despicable Biden for laughing at her son's fentanyl death. What a absolute piece of human garbage. And Senator Mike Lee, not a piece of human garbage, joins the show to talk about absolutely pistol whipping Merrick Garland yesterday. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. It seems as though the Biden regime is in complete collapse, but will they collapse all of your finances before they leave office and are impeached and hopefully thrown into Guantanamo Bay? Don't you want to protect what you have earned? Folks, you got to check out my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold has the highest rating in the industry with the Better Business Bureau. Allegiance Gold can help protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver. Things are getting crazy out there. Have you seen the stock market up and down a roller coaster? Have you seen the plans for the digital dollar and that disastrous rollout? Ladies and gentlemen, you should be investing and diversifying right now. You can get physical gold delivered to ex to your doorstep. That's what I did. Got the gold brought right to my doorstep. Gold and silver are the only assets that build value without depending on the government. And these people are not worth investing in. Protect yourself today. Right now, get $5,000 in free silver with a qualifying investment when you visit protectwithbenny.com or call 484-66-BENNY, protectwithbenny.com. People who need protection today are the Biden family, and they need everything that they can possibly get here, baby, because it is turning into a absolute bloodbath with the new Biden business associates turning on the Biden family, exclusive from Breitbart.com this morning, F. Eric Hunter Biden plotted to betray key family business partner expected to cooperate with GOP probe. Now, what do we know about Eric? Who is Eric exactly? Is he talking about Eric Holder? No, Eric Holder is the reason that the Biden family got into this mess. Eric Holder should have been prosecuting the vice president when he was DOJ under Barack Obama. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, it all goes back to Obama. Who packed the boxes for Joe Biden? What's happening right now to Joe Biden? It all goes back to Barack Obama. You know it. We've seen the State Department cables. They knew the criminality of the Biden family. They knew this whole thing was a dumpster fire and they let it happen anyway. Maybe they want it to happen now. And Joe Biden is now having the dogs of war sicked on him by Barack Obama. That's the real revenge here. Barack Obama with a word or a tweet could save Joe Biden and he won't do it. The viciousness of these people. Hunter Biden plotted in 2019 to betray the family's top financial lieutenant, Eric Schwerin. So Eric Schwerin is the man we're talking about here. Amid their crumbling relationship built on an off-the-books business arrangement, text messages obtained by Breitbart News show. Hunter's damaged relationship with Schwerin is notable because Schwerin is expected to provide revealing documents about the Biden family business to Republican House investigators, according to the House Oversight Committee. It is unknown what information may be provided in the wake of the deteriorated relationship with Hunter. Uh, but despite their close relationship, this is the guy who set up all the business. This guy, it's always the money men. If you're taking down the mob, it's always the money guys. How do you get John Gotti? How do you get Al Capone? How's Al Capone end up in Alcatraz? The guy ran Chicago. The guy was like the bootlegger for Joe Kennedy back in the day. Al Capone, hugely, hugely powerful. They got him on tax fraud. They got his accountants. They got his attorneys. And ladies and gentlemen, there you go. 
died in Alcatraz. Schwerin knows where all the bodies are buried. Despite Schwerin's close relationship with the family, Hunter's text messages from 2008 show a deepening distrust of Schwerin and his involvement in family affairs. Hunter apparently owed Schwerin a ton of money. Their relationship became so poor that Hunter announced that Schwerin is his worst enemy. And everyone knows it. By 2019, their relationship deteriorated to the point that Hunter hatched a plot to cut out Schwerin. Wow. So now this guy, Eric Schwerin, is cooperating and telling everyone who the big guy is. This according to James Comer, friend of the show, who's saying that Eric Schwerin, uh, just last Friday, he was here on the show saying Eric Schwerin is in my office and he is singing like a canary. Check it out. The one that stands out in my mind is where uh, Sherwin emails Hunter Biden and says, your dad's Delaware tax refund is coming in the mail. I'm going to deposit it into his account and then turn around and write a check from him to you for some of the money that he owes you. That shows several things. It shows that Sherwin was handling Joe Biden's finances. And this is at a time when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. So uh, he's writing checks, transferring money back and forth between Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. Uh, this is very important because one question we have is, were these accounts commingled? I think I know the answer to that, but we're going to make sure that we can provide 100% evidence on everything that we say, because this is a very serious investigation, as you know. And also, uh, it's going to uh, kind of get a picture of how the Biden family, uh, how their business schemes worked. H how did they uh, work together? Because at the end of the day, this is an investigation of Joe Biden. And Sherwin is the one guy that we know, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, was uh, in charge of bank accounts for both Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. So this guy knows everything. This is where the black box is. This is where the body is buried. Now, the New York Post knows exactly what these emails will reveal and exactly what the crimes are inside of them. So the New York Post has been doing the best reporting on this, and they say... Ladies and gentlemen, expect these bodies to be resumed from the ground, and we shall see the corpses of the Bidens and those skeletons laid bare. Watch. Hunter Biden admitting in a 2014 email that his longtime business partner, Eric Schwerin, was a, quote, close confidant and counsel to then Vice President Biden. But the president keeps denying, saying he knows nothing of the Biden family business deals cashing in on his government job. What do you make of this? Well, we already know that that oft-repeated line from Joe Biden is just not true. He was deeply involved in Hunter Biden's business dealings. The question is how much. And as for Eric Schwerin, I would say there is nobody who was closer to the action outside of the Biden family than Eric Schwerin. He knows where all the bodies are buried. If you go through that hard drive, he is on so many emails going back more than a decade. His fingerprints are everywhere. He so. It, he's, he, it's very important that he apparently is cooperating with the House. So you may recall, and if you are watching, we say thank you. We love you. If you're a part of the Salty Army, if you're part of the Benny Brigade, I think that's what we're going to brand ourselves. We'll make like a little, we'll make like a little graphic and everything. Uh, okay, so if you're part of the Benny Brigade, you're going to know. You're going to know about crime in America. Even I recall the O.J. Simpson trial. Uh, but O.J. Simpson didn't prance into the courtroom with a bloody glove dripping in the blood of his wife and slap the judge with it. That's effectively what the Bidens are doing here. There is so much evidence against the Bidens. Uh, you, I mean, essentially, you'd have, you'd have to be Ray Charles not to see it. Check out this voicemail that was unearthed by ALX the Great, uh, the producer of this show, showing Hunter Biden ranting about Schwerin and the use of money and going behind his back to reach Joe Biden. The, the evidence is incredible. Watch. I get calls from my father to tell me that the New York Times is calling, but my old partner, Eric, who literally has done me harm for I don't know how long, is the one taking the calls because my father will not stop sending the calls to Eric. I have another New York Times reporter calling about my representation of the, literally, Dr. Patrick Ko, the spy chief of China, who started the company that my partner, who was worth $323 billion, founded, and is now missing. 
The richest man in the world is missing, who was my partner. He was missing since I last saw him in his $58 million apartment and signed a $4 billion deal to be, build the largest LNG port in the world. And I am receiving calls from the Southern District of New York, from the U.S. Attorney himself. My best friend in business, Devin, has named me as a witness without telling me. In a criminal case, and my father, without telling me. Bet you've never heard that. That's why you watch, ladies and gentlemen. We are on it. We, day and night, we are on it, unearthing the things you've never heard. That's Hunter Biden in his own words saying that the walls are closing in, that his friends are betraying him, they are listing him as criminal defendants, and his father. Whoa. We know it all comes back to Joe Biden. We've been given that confirmation and reassurance by everyone. Lauren Boebert was on the show yesterday. We know it all goes back to Joe Biden, and so does the most dangerous man in Congress. Now, Chuck Grassley comes across as like an old elderly grandpa. You sit on his lap, you get a candy cane for Christmas. Chuck Grassley, don't mess though. Chuck Grassley is the king of oversight. Chuck Grassley takes the constitutional responsibility of oversight in Congress, which is the first article of the Constitution, not the second. Congress is over the executive. Congress has power over the executive. He takes that very seriously. He has a team of bulldog lawyers and the best oversight in all of Congress. So when he stares Merrick Garland down the barrel of a gun and says, yo, I have dozens of sources that tell me about the criminality of the Biden family that you are sitting on, that makes people's boots shake. He did it yesterday. Ignore the 80-year-old grandfatherly nature of Chuck Grassley. This man is an old bull, and you don't want the horns. Check it out. ...indicate that the Justice Department and the FBI had at one time over a dozen sources that provided potentially criminal information relating to Hunter Biden. The alleged volume and similarity of the information would demand that the Justice Department investigate the truth and accuracy of the information. According to... Uh, what's, accordingly, what steps has the Justice Department taken to determine the truth and accuracy of information provided? Uh, Congress and the American people, I think, have a right to know. Um, so uh, as the committee well knows from my confirmation hearing, I, promise, uh, to leave, I promised to leave the matter of Hunter Biden in the hands of the U.S. Attorney uh, for the District of Delaware, who was appointed uh, in the previous administration. So any Information like that should have gone uh, or should or should have uh, gone to that U.S. Attorney's offices and the FBI squad that's working uh, with him. I have pledged not to interfere uh, with that investigation, and I uh, have carried through on my pledge. Well, well, where the hell are the charges? If you've pledged not to interfere, we know that Hunter Biden threw his gun away in a dumpster. He acquired that gun illegally. He you claim to care about, care about gun crime. Joe Biden passed the crack laws that put hundreds of thousands of young black men in prison, but not Hunter, of course. It really does seem to be a long streak of white privilege in the Biden family. That is coming to a crashing end because they are such dirty human beings. They're so dirty to the people who work with them, including Tony Bobulinski, who is an unsung hero in all of this. We would know so little about the Biden criminality without Tony Bobulinski. We went through the archives and we found a clip that's nearly three years old of Tony Bobulinski just outing Joe Biden as the kingpin of this crime family. And we thought it was important to sort of revisit this because Tony Bobulinski is one of the people who are turning on the Biden. They have no friends left. Hunter Biden's lawyer quit yesterday. Everyone is turning on them. This is panic time. Tony Bobulinski was the first. Very brave man. Watch. I didn't generate that email. James Gilliard generated that email. And in that email, James Gilliard goes through intimate detail of what each individual's requests were from a compensation perspective and how the equity in the enterprise would be divvied up. Very important. May 13th. That email was generated by somebody else to me. In that email, there's a statement where they go through the equity. Jim Biden's referenced as 
you know, 10 percent doesn't say Biden. It says Jim. And then it has 10 percent for the big guy held by H. I a thousand percent sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden. Um, it's that's crystal clear to me because I lived it. I met with the former vice president in person multiple times. And I had been meeting and talking with Hunter Biden and, and uh, Jim Biden and Rob Walker and James Gilly. So we know that multiple business associates now of Joe Biden have flipped and are turning on him and are communicating directly with James Comer. But who are the other mysterious ones? James Comer was on TV this week dropping bombshell after bombshell saying that he now has three whistleblowers coming forward about the Biden criminality. Who are these other mysterious men? It's very interesting as you go through this web and you find out that the Bidens, and this will come as no shock to you, uh, dear viewer inside of the uh, Benny Brigade, inside of the Salty Army, shout out where you're watching from. We love showing people where we, where we are in the world, showing how uh, important the truth is, how powerful this audience is, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, we'll be joined by Senator Mike Lee very, very soon, and we're going to talk about this. Mike Lee, I think, will have quite a bit to say about it. Mike Lee was questioning Merrick Garland on this just yesterday. But ladies and gentlemen, it's interesting to see that the Bidens have no more friends. Not even their lawyers are staying on. James Comer saying three individuals have now come forward, mysterious individuals, unnamed, saying they know the details of the Biden criminality and they're coming forward as whistleblowers. They're cooperating. Now that's a total of five. This spells doom for the Biden family. Watch. Washington Free Beacon reporting an alleged Hunter Biden whistleblower says that the DOJ is burying him after he came forward with damning information about the Bidens. Israeli think tank executive Gal Luft uh, worked with Hunter as an advisor to the Chinese energy conglomerate. He tweeted this, I've been arrested in Cyprus on a politically motivated extradition request by the United States. The U.S. is claiming I'm an arms dealer. The DOJ is trying to bury me to protect Joe, Jim, and Hunter Biden. Shall I name names, he tweeted out. Congressman, what do you know about this? Well, we're reaching out to him. We're trying to communicate. We're setting up a call. Uh, this is something that we take very seriously. We had already identified this individual. Uh, we had uh, hoped to have talked to him by now, but for whatever reason, we were unable to. I think this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, I'll tell you this, Maria. We've had three people that were involved in the Hunter Biden shady business schemes uh, that have communicated with uh, my committee staff this week. I think that's a sign of good things to come. I think we're going in a positive direction. And I think that people see the heavy handedness of the Bidens. Either you're getting picked up by the DOJ or you're getting a letter from Hunter Biden's personal attorney trying to intimidate you into not coming in and talking to us. So so intimidation is a tactic that the Bidens often use. I'm going to jump into Hunter Biden's emails right now, his text messages with his daughter. You can't get more personal than that. We're going to put them up on screen here, and you're going to see. I want to bring your attention to one specific text message right here, talking about what Eric Schwerin has done to him and to Joe Biden and why this relationship is now in flames and what we're about to see, because this is a preview of things to come, ladies and gentlemen. Hunter Biden accused Schwerin of leaving him with a tax bill hanging over my business, texting Haley Biden, his brother's widow turned lover. I'm sorry. I thought that this was Natalie. This is Haley. My correction. This is his brother's widow that Hunter Biden then turned into his plaything. Uh, noted in December 14th of 2018, because that's totally freaking messed up. This dirty, 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 filthy criminal family. By the way, do you know that Joe Biden, do you know that Joe Biden stole another man's wife? Her name was Jill, that she was married to someone else. Joe Biden went in and like wrecked that marriage, started having an affair with Jill. This is cataloged. Just, just a reminder of like restoring the soul of America, who these people are. Uh, even as Joe Biden was running for president, I'm going to read you the text message from Hunter Biden right now. You're right, Haley. I find myself because I've chosen to alienate my friends and my families and employees, <laughs> my kids and my wife. So great guy there, Hunter Biden. Very alone in dealing with rebuilding an income that can support an enormous alimony. My kids, myself, dealing with the aftermath of the abdication and likely assassination 
of my business partner, the richest man in the world, the arresting conviction of the chief intelligence of the People's Republic of China, the U.S. government, the retaliation of the Chinese, the ouster of the arrest of suspected CIA operatives in China, my suspected involvement in brokering a deal with Vladimir Putin directly, and the largest scale of oil and gas assets inside of Russia and China, a tax bill that Eric left hanging over my business, and dad's running for president. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's nice when the bad guys start to monologue at the end of the movie and they have, like, the superhero in, you know, chains or whatever, and they just monologue and they tell you their entire evil plans in one fell swoop. That's exactly what Hunter Biden does here. He talks about being in business with China. He talks about being in business with Russia. He talks about selling out American national gas to those evil entities and evil corporations. He talks about how his business partner is the spy chief of China and how all of these deals are illegal and how his dad knows about them. Sometimes it's nice to just have it all buttoned up there in a nice little evil monologue. Meanwhile, Joe Biden on camera saying he knows nothing about Hunter Biden's business development. Now, this is a master class, okay, in what they call the wrap-up smear. This is an important tactic. We've talked about it a lot on the show. The wrap-up smears, when they have you dead to rights in a crisis or a criminal act, then you need to then accuse the people who caught you of doing the same thing. Now watch this tactic. This tactic is taught to Democrats and they utilize it with regularity. Very important. They actually are a racist party. They literally want to check your skin color before admitting you to college or giving you a job. They are a literal racist. They use Nazi tautology against you. So they're the racist, but they'll immediately accuse Mitt Romney of being a racist. If he runs for president, yeah, Mitt Romney. It's used all the time. It's called the wrap-up smear. And because they control the press and because they control the media, they get away with it. Not for long, as our shows grow and blossom and bloom and gain in magnitude uh, and momentum. But, ladies and gentlemen, still, this is what they do. This is a picture-perfect example of that. Joe Biden is asked point blank at the Iowa State Fair when he was running for president. He got fifth place in Iowa by Peter Ducey, champion of the people. Hey, yo, uh, you're involved in your son's dirty business dealings. Why? And watch Joe Biden's response. If this isn't an admission of guilt, I don't know what is. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader, if that's what happened? That appears what happened. You should be looking at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the uh, presidency to try to do something to smear me. Everybody looked at this, and everybody's looked at it and said there's nothing there. Ask the right question. Mr. Biden, okay, you never spoken to your Pardon son. Are being impeached for this? Depending on what the, what the House finds. Oh, man. Are you a Christian? Do you love our sweet Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, then you will love Bible verses. We share a verse of the day every single day on this program. We have one for you. And we're going to be asking Mike Lee, Senator Mike Lee, when he's on the program here in just a few minutes, about the attacks on Christianity by this administration. But if you know the sweet, sweet, good book, then you'll know that pride comes before destruction. That's some Old Testament justice right there. That kings get felled. That, that uh, you know, Saul... Uh, 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 these, these, who's the king that hunted David? David. David, King David. Come on, Royce, Rolls Royce. It's not Saul. Oh, Royce. Uh, so you have... It is Saul. It was Saul. I was right. Yes, fantastic. Bible verse. These kings get felled. Their pride is their undoing. King Saul was turned into an animal and forced to go eat and graze in the bushes and in the weeds. King Saul. Man, I love being right about that stuff. But Bible verse knowing. So 
It is important, biblically, to humble leaders. God does it often. And it is clips like that of Joe Biden looking down the barrel of a Fox News camera going, ask the right questions. Those kind of things will turn into humbling experiences. And they are right now. And I am a believer. And I do believe, actually, that powerful kings on this earth, that their hubris becomes their undoing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as you watch clips like that of Joe Biden barking and spitting in the face of Peter Ducey and then probably getting a whiff smell of his hair a little bit afterwards, you got to see some beautiful justice that will come from this moment. And we are really, really excited to watch that. The House is working and they are working overtime on this issue. Day one of a Republican majority, they announced the open criminal investigation into Joe Biden. And we are very, very excited about what is going to transpire here, ladies and gentlemen. And there are more open criminal investigations inside of the United States House. AOC being criminally investigated. And if AOC actually got real handcuffs one of these days, you'd want to make sure that you had the right cell phone coverage to capture that. You want to make sure that you're on a, a good plan, ladies and gentlemen. I encourage you, if you're using one of those big woke companies, to switch over to my friends at Patriot Mobile. Patriot Mobile is one of the emerging leaders inside of the parallel economy. They now have service on all three major networks. Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider, offering broad nationwide coverage on the best 4G and 5G networks. So you get the same great service with a company that's fighting for your God-given rights. Plus, they don't just offer service for consumers. They have great business plans for any size company, including our company. We have 15 full or part-time employees here, and we thank you for supporting us, and we thank Patriot Mobile as well for giving us cell service that, um, let me tell you, comes in very handy in this business. You do not want a slow uplink. Got to work fast, and we do it with Patriot Mobile. Go to patriotmobile.com backslash Benny right now and get free activation today with the offer code Benny. That's patriotmobile.com backslash Benny. So uh, somebody who may be needing some cheaper cell phone service or some cheaper bills is AOC because she's going to have to pay some pretty huge fines, it turns out. Ethics investigators are saying there is a substantial reason to believe that AOC did violate House rules by attending the 2021 Met Gala. Hysterical because she had stamped on her ass tax the rich. Remember that dress? Tax the rich. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. But I'm going to put a giant billboard right there on my backside. There you go. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm not just a bunch of body parts put together, but also look at me. Tax the rich. Well, she's going to be the one paying fines, ladies and gentlemen. According to breaking news, she is violating House rules by doing this. Check it out. The Office of Congressional Ethics is also saying it has substantial reason to believe Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez violated certain rules when she attended the Met Gala in 2021. The report says the New York Democratic Congresswoman improperly accepted gifts in the form of tickets. The Office of Congressional Ethics can refer issues to the Ethics Committee for further review. The formal panel has not launched an inquiry yet into Ocasio-Cortez. Ladies and gentlemen, AOC looking into the investigation. She has now been referred by the Office of Congressional Ethics Board uh, for impermissible gifts. What does that mean? Well, she went to the Fancy Fans Richie McRich Person Festival, the Met Gala. She, this is a $35,000 ticket to get into this gala, wearing a Tax the Rich dress. Also, that dress is essentially uh, a the, the the breaking of uh, rules inside of the house because that was a that was a gift from a tax cheat herself. According to a spokesperson, AOC staff uh, didn't pay for her rental dress, makeup, or other accessories. Yikes! The Wall Group, representing the makeup artist, claimed the progressive firegram didn't pay her bill. <laughs> it's always these people getting their. Uh, getting destroyed by the makeup artists that they forced to work. Remember Nancy Pelosi wandered through that salon in San Francisco and forced them to get her hair did when COVID was all locked down, Ma Nancy Pelosi maskless? Lori Lightfoot did the exact same thing. These makeup people, man. <laughs> Tell you what, be nice to your makeup people. As somebody who works in TV quite a bit, be kind to the makeup people. So they are going after AOC now. Uh, uh, I just never, ever, ever would have allowed this to happen Knowing that what I have learned, uh, I wasn't privy to the invoices. 
So AOC is just forcing these people to work for free for her. Classic communist, actually. Really classic communist move. Another classic communist move is to lie to you and to keep information from you. Now, you could argue that the revelation of all the January 6th footage, the January 6th that also, you know, apparently killed AOC 400,000 times. What's the Babylon Bee headline? Uh, Tucker Carlson goes through January 6th footage, finds out that AOC was, uh, was, was murdered uh, 1,400 times during January 6th. AOC wasn't even in the building. Fact check. AOC wasn't even there, but of course was the first person to wander out and pantomime uh, that she was a victim. We also have footage of AOC being fake arrested. We'll pull that up for you. You know that AOC invented invisible handcuffs? Very important stuff. Uh, Tucker Carlson has talked about what he's about to do with the January 6th footage. Now, it's old news that Kevin McCarthy handed Tucker Carlson 45,000 hours of January 6th footage. Tucker Carlson is going through that footage. He's now been doing that for weeks, apparently. But last night on the show, Tucker Carlson announced what he is going to be doing with that footage and gives a little sneak peek as to what it reveals. And spoiler alert, it doesn't show AOC being attacked at all. Not that we want that, but uh, definitely not in that footage. AOC wasn't in the building, even though she says that she was murdered during, during uh, January 6th. Uh, it does show, however, that Nancy Pelosi and the elites who have been hoarding this footage are lying to you. Ooh, baby, here's the bombshell. Watch. Defenders of democracy are out defending democracy again. They're telling you it's really, really dangerous. And anyone would get to see the thousands of hours of surveillance footage from January 6th, which has been hidden from the public for two years, as a tiny group of people gets to make up stories about what happened that day and change the country on the basis of those stories. And we respectfully disagree. We think people should, in a democracy, be allowed to see what their government is doing and get as much evidence as they can. And it turns out the public agrees. Rasmussen, the polling firm, just found that 80% of American voters believe it's important that the public should be allowed to see the videos from January 6th. That would include 86% of Republicans, okay, but it would also include 78% of Democrats, 78% and 75% of independents. Wow. So you're defending democracy, but you're denying people information on the basis of which they can make their own decisions. How does that work exactly? Well, it's not democracy, of course. It's building a bulwark against your lies being revealed. And they are lying. And we know that because we've been looking at the tape. We're going to bring you information on the tape and some of it next week. And we think it's going to be really, really interesting. Oh, my. Buckle up, baby. Buckle up, buttercups. It's such a great point, too, by the way. Like, if you actually did care about this country and you cared about the people in it, then you would expose everything. You would expose what happened on January 6th. We're adults. We can take it. What happened on January 6th? Let's have a look. Boy, we're seeing some uh, things leak out right now that are shocking. But also, we've talked with Cash Patel about how they degraded security at the Capitol. We've talked to people about federal agents inside of the Capitol. And per perhaps we'll ask Mike Lee about this, Senator Mike Lee, who will be on momentarily to talk about this. This would actually be a great question. And ladies and gentlemen, we will put some of your questions. Every interview, we're going to start putting questions on screen. So get ready with your questions. We will ask your questions to one of the best-based senators in the Senate, Mike Lee. Make sure you get your questions ready. We'll be happy to ask them. We will start doing that regularly. So uh, another good question and another bit of sunlight would be, huh, where the hell did COVID come from? Because we found out this week that it came, again, from a Chinese lab. Of course, you already knew that. It would be probably important for the administration to start putting a little pressure on China, the same way that Peter Ducey puts pressure on the administration, asking a great question yet. What a great, great question. He says, if China killed 1.1 million Americans with guns, well, wouldn't you be upset at China? Wouldn't this be an issue? Baby, wait till you watch this response. This is, oh, absolutely incredible. So it's such a great point. So if you say a million Americans were killed by COVID, well, then if China went and killed them with firearms, you'd be very upset. But you don't have anything to say about lab leak. You're utterly uninterested in the lab leak. That seems a little disingenuous. C cringe Jean-Pierre's response here. 
let me tell you, it will leave you wanting. Such beautiful questions, just a great setup. And ladies and gentlemen, it's our nuclear cringe for the day. Thank you, Kareem. Why is President Biden afraid of China? The president is not afraid of China. Well, did you see did you see the president last week when we went to uh, when we went to uh, we went to Ukraine, went to Kiev. But this is not a president that's afraid of anything. It was a historic trip uh, that many of you said was brave. Uh, so clearly, this is a president that's not afraid to go to a war zone. Uh, he's not afraid to go there when there's no military presence on the ground. So there's nothing that this president fears. China flew a spy craft over the U.S. The president didn't really do anything to China. And according to the FBI director, China may have created something that has killed more than 1.1 million people in this country and president biden is not punishing them so you're you're giving me two two things here so let's take them in parts um as we talk about the chinese surveillance the china surveillance balloon the president did take that down and so here we have uh Karine jean pierre cringe jean pierre this is why we play the nuclear cringe because she's lying again joe biden did not walk out during an air raid when he's in kiev Joe Biden uh, faked an air raid. He had to fake it to look tough. Not only do we know this because of CNN and Reuters, who said there were no Russian jets and no MiGs and no bombs in the air, they played the air sirens while Biden wobbled through Kyiv uh, in order to make him look tough because this president is entire piss and vinegar. He is the most cowardly, craven president we've ever had. But more importantly, we know now that the White House told Russia and asked permission from Vladimir Putin to go there. <laughs> Jake Sullivan said it. Jake Sullivan working with John Curry, who was asked a similar question by Peter Ducey yesterday about China killing a million Americans. What the hell are you doing about it, you little greaseball? Check it out. Future pandemic. But we've got the FBI director saying most likely a potential lab incident in Wuhan. Yeah. If, if a foreign yeah. country came to the United States and killed 1.1 million Americans with guns, would the president just let that slide? Nobody's letting anything slide. That's why the president wants the intelligence community to work so hard to, to get to, hopefully, to get some, to some answers that, uh, that we can rely on. Right now, there's just no consensus. Um, it's hard to take a look at what the president has done here in terms of declassifying and making public information already, in terms of the constant and consistent briefings to members of Congress in a classified and unclassified setting in just recent weeks on what the origins of COVID were and on his tasking again to the intelligence community to keep at that work and come away from that thinking that he's not taking this seriously. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people who are not taking their jobs seriously are the ones who are lying to you about the origins of COVID, the ones who are keeping the January 6th footage from you. Shouldn't you know what happened that day? Isn't sunlight the best disinfectant? Don't you need disinfectant if you are building a human race slaughtering virus inside of a laboratory with funding from Dr. Fauci? Wouldn't you want to know? What's happening inside of those dark medical hallways, like the ones that John Fetterman currently resides inside? Do you know that John Fetterman is co-sponsoring Senate bills despite being institutionalized since February 15th? Boy, oh boy, man. Spe like, speaking of true depravity and cruelty to your fellow human beings, Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman continues to be hospitalized for clinical depression. He's been named a co-sponsor of a bipartisan bill launched in the wake of the toxic train to derailment. That's a little strange because John Fetterman hasn't gone to East Palestine, even though the, all this toxic smoke, all of it, poured right into Pennsylvania. Do you know inside of East Palestine, we went there, there's something called the State Line Tavern. Why is that? Well, because it's right on the state line with Pennsylvania. It runs right through the town. So while a lot of people talk about Ohio, this is as much a Pennsylvania problem as it is an Ohio problem. Part of East Palestine is in Pennsylvania. That's how close it is to the state line uh, between the states. So where the hell is the senator from Pennsylvania? That'd be a great, great question here. Didn't they elect this guy to represent the downtrodden and the working class? Well, that's who's filled in East Palestine uh, with chemicals, toxic, from the sky based on the government. You'd think that it'd be good to have a John Fetterman on the ground there to help these working class people. Isn't he from Braddock or something? Yet he's been institutionalized. 
Uh, how's he sponsoring bills here? Fetterman's office has not said who is co-sponsoring the legislation with his name on it while he remains institutionalized. In addition, Fetterman apparently signed on to a letter along with Senator Casey. So he's like still do again. This, this is Joe Biden stuff, man. It's Joe Biden. It's Joe Biden. You put Muppets into office and, uh, you know, like the debtor, but the better, because it's easy to pull the strings from behind the scenes. You have a, a situation here that Barack Obama actually predicted. Barack Obama on with Stephen Colbert saying, my dream presidency would be to have some meat puppet up in charge. And then I just get to pull the strings behind the scenes and make everything happen. That guy gets to go out and be the punching bag all day and night. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the issue that you have here with uh, John Fetterman. You have uh, major problems that are breaking uh, across the river from Pennsylvania in East Palestine. Joe Biden saying that he will be visiting East Palestine now, finally, a month after the toxic train derailment. Joe Biden saying at some point, you know who's more important? Voldemort Zelensky. You know who's more important than Jim Bob? who works at the welding factory in East Palestine in America, whose kids' water are now poisoned. Voldemort Zelensky is easier to fake an air raid siren than actually go to a real emergency uh, a couple miles down the street from the White House. Check out Joe Biden finally saying that at some point he will go to East Palestine. I've spoken with every official in Ohio. Democrat and Republican on a continuous basis, as in Pennsylvania. I laid out a little bit in there what I think the answers are. We put it together, and we will be implementing an awful lot into the legislation here, and I will be able to do it. Mr. President, Mr. So I'm sure that brings real cold comfort to the people of East Palestine. That a month after they had their water, soil, and air poisoned. Now the construction workers are experiencing nausea and toxicity from just working on the site. I'm sure that means a lot. You know, remember, our president is an environmentalist. Uh, somebody who is clearly not of sound mind is Joe Biden. Joe Biden has been laughing at mothers who have children who died from fentanyl overdoses. This is some sick stuff, and it's some really repulsive stuff that uh, is really, really demented and evil. Uh, yesterday, Joe Biden was giving a speech in Virginia Beach, and he decided to chuckle and make fun of a mother who lost her son due to the open criminality on the border and the poisoning of a foreign country, China, on our own streets. Check out this clip of Joe Biden, this absolutely craven, evil, dirty man. She, she was very specific recently saying that a mom, a poor mother who lost two kids to fentanyl, that, that I killed her sons. Well, the interesting thing is that fentanyl they took came during the last administration. <laughs> oh, great. Hey, let's laugh. This is a laugh. This is totally a laughing matter. Man, if you need signs, if you need to see the telltale literal textbook signs of dementia, open, crack open a book and then watch Joe, watch Joe Biden give any single speech and just compare notes. Mother of that child was comparing notes and was furious going on television and demanding an apology from Joe Biden. We'll see if she gets one. Check it out. Rebecca Kiesling, I'm so sorry for your loss. Those words will never take away the pain you feel, but I do pray for you and I pray for all those families that you now are giving a voice to. And um, God just bless one you. more thing, if I may, just the president owes me an apology and all of the other parents who have lost their children. They owe us. He owes us an apology. He does. He absolutely does. Completely heartbreaking. These parents not of, like like clearly dealing with a president who's not of sound mind. Somebody who is, is of sound mind joins the program now. Senator Mike Lee to talk about all of this. Senator, thank you so much for being on the program. You're a member of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, you could possibly look into issues like this. Uh, is fentanyl on the open border going to be a priority for the Senate this term? It's going to be a priority, and it must be a priority. I've made it a priority. Look, we, we look to the fact that last year, 110,000 Americans were killed by fentanyl poisoning. Think about that for a minute, Benny. 
110,000 Americans just, just in one year. Now, this stuff is coming over. We know where it's coming from. It's coming from Mexico. It's being trafficked in by drug cartels who have free reign over the border. This border, these, these guys are like, uh, they're like the unarmed English Bobby who, upon seeing the commission of a crime, simply yells, stop, or I'll yell, stop again. And this, this uh, constant um, uh, train, uh, virtual train of people and substances smuggled in are resulting in the deaths of 110,000 Americans every year. If a foreign sovereign did this to us, it'd be war. In fact, it'd be a war crime. It, it's time to uh, take a hard look at this. Uh, and among other things, I think it's time to designate Mexican drug cartels as foreign terrorist organizations. And uh, we need to go after them hard because they're killing people. That's almost as many people as we lost in terms of American lives lost in World War I. It, this, is, uh, it, this is nasty. It's more than we lost in Vietnam. Yeah, nasty is what they're doing to parents. You had an incredible moment two days ago with Merrick Garland where you brought up a parent who was being persecuted by Merrick Garland's DOJ for being pro-life. We have the clip queued up here. We're going to play it, and I think this is possibly one of the most important issues of our current day. Watch. In 2022 and for the first couple of months of 2023, DOJ has announced charges against 34 individuals for blocking access to or vandalizing abortion clinics. And there, there have been over 81 per, per, per reported attacks on pregnancy centers, 130 attacks on Catholic churches since the leak of the Dobbs decision, and only two individuals have been charged. So how do you explain this disparity uh, uh, by reference to anything other than politicization of what's happening there? I will say you're quite right. There are many more prosecutions with respect to uh, to the um, um, blocking of the uh, um, of the abortion centers, but that is generally because they are those actions are taken in, uh, with photography at the time um, uh, during the daylight, and uh, seeing the person who did it is uh, quite easy. Um, the, those who are attacking the pregnancy resources centers, uh, which is a, a horrid thing to do, are doing this at night um, in the dark. We have put full resources on this. So if you want to commit a crime, you just do it in the dark. Yeah, let's go. I mean, look, if that's all, all he's really doing at, at best here, he's facilitating the uh, those who are good with scheduling their criminality. He, <laughs> he's telling them, yeah, just do it at night. You'll be fine. I didn't know that under the FACE Act or any other provision of federal law, for that matter, that it gave you a get out of jail free pass if you were willing to commit your crime at night. This is nuts. We have so many other ways of catching these people. The fact is that this is flagrant mismanagement at the Department of Justice. This is blatant politicization of a department run amok. And I, look, I firmly believe that Merrick Garland is, uh, there is within him a prosecutor. There is within him a good man. I believe that he is fundamentally a good man. I believe he is not in control of his department, which is being run by radical leftists. And he's just being one guy. He's not enough to counterbalance them. This is why I was worried about him from the outset. This is why I voted against him, even though I, I, I think he's a good person. I voted against him because I could see who else was going to be running the department with him. Uh, people like Vanita Gupta and Kathleen Clark. And I could see he was going to be no match for them whatsoever. Mm. So the people who he seems to be a match for are, are Christians. You now have FBI guidance to uh, spy on Latin mass to go after pro-life advocates. It seems as though this is a deeply anti-Christian administration. Do you believe that as well? Well, I, I, I certainly think that there is an anti-religious, anti-Christian movement within this administration. It, they're certainly not sympathetic to it at all. In fact, they're hostile to it. They're willing to push things like the Equality Act, the Equality Act, which expressly repeals in pertinent part the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, making it easier for government to retaliate against uh, all kinds of institutions, including religious institutions, who who, yes. who don't buy into their woke corporatist elite culture. Yeah, I, I just I, I think beyond the pale for me, beyond the pale for me is placing FBI agents to spy on Catholic mass because it's delivered in it's just delivered in Latin. As somebody who's not I mean, I'm not a Catholic, but that, I mean, doesn't that violate every conception of our original founding documents? Yes. And isn't that isn't that the purpose of the purpose of America was religious freedom? And now you have the government inserting itself into your religious practices. Yes. 
Look, there were two, not one, but two religious freedom protections built into the First Amendment. They managed to violate both of them at the same time. Uh, the, the, the Establishment Clause uh, has been interpreted to uh, contain, among other things, an anti-entanglement provision. You, you don't meddle with the operation of a church. And of course, the Free Exercise Clause is obviously at stake uh, here as well. And the reason here is because they, they, they regard Catholics, they regard many other religious Americans, particularly Christians, uh, as extremists. Hmm. And they also regard uh, domestic extremism as the worst kind of threat to American national security that exists, greater than the millions of people flooding across our borders from like 150, 160 different countries all over the world with toxic substances killing 110,000 people a year. Something's terribly wrong with this administration. Yes. And it, there's, there's, there is no way that the American people can look at this. When we get to November of 2024, I want every American to remember what's going on, what's been going on. We can't stand for this anymore. Well, you see, Senator, the people who cross the border illegally, they do it in the dark. And so how could they possibly be yeah. caught? It's in the dark. Yeah, the darkness exception. I always forget about that. Yeah. You are, I, th I think f few understand how deeply uh, you understand our founding documents, our first principles, uh, and what ties this country together and the moral fabric that ties this country together. I think many will say, especially after the bruising and the pistol whipping that happened to Merrick Garland, that this seems to be a deeply anti-Christian administration. However, what we will ask as an audience is how, what, what is to be done, right? So there's, there's, it's good to get the clips. It's good to bang the fist on the table, but where is the oversight? Where is the oversight of Article One of the Constitution, Congress, over Article Two, which is the executive? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, hearings like this one do give us a, a, a glimpse into oversight as it would exist if we were in the majority. Mm -hmm. We have to hold these hearings because it's a tradition. It's a custom. It's what we do in the Senate. On the House side, they can get much more meaningful oversight because they're in the majority. They hold the gavels. They can hold the witness there longer. They can decide how long the rounds are. You know, Chairman Durbin was very, very um, aggressive in making sure that we didn't get too much time in this because he's wanting to protect this Democratic administration. They're not going to be that way in the House. The House is going to have it much more so. The House also has the the power, both the threat and the actuality of uh, of impeachment charges. They can choose to pursue those, particularly with those who don't participate, don't answer their questions or otherwise abusing their power while in office. So that ultimately all of our best tools right now as conservatives uh, or just as people who are religious and are dedicated to the American way of life, uh, our best leverage right now exists through the House of Representatives. And that's why I meet regularly, constantly with my colleagues over there, particularly those in the House Freedom Caucus, uh, strategizing about what comes next. Yes. So what does come next on this COVID issue with the lab leak this week? Even the administration seems to be joining with common sense Republicans uh, talking about this. Uh, the bipartisan Senate, there was a bipartisan bill in the Senate saying that the administration must release uh, information on the, the lab leak and COVID's origins. Am I wrong? Is this going yeah. to happen? Yeah. They, well, they, they promised that it would happen. They've been directed to make that happen. It's going to happen. If it doesn't, there's going to be hell to pay for it. There does need to be hell to pay. And as I as I tweeted through base like Mike Lee yesterday, uh, if if ever there were a moment base, Mike Lee, by the way, thanks for getting oh, me back on awesome. Twitter. Uh, uh, that was very helpful of you. There um, you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's fantastic. Um I tweeted out that if there ever there were a good argument, never again to trust the federal government with being the manager of what's true and what's not, uh, the, the identifier of misinformation and disinformation and the entity that has the power to squelch such things. It's this very moment where, where with COVID, literally everything they were telling us was wrong uh, about masking, about vaccination, about lockdowns. You name it, they were wrong particularly about the origins of COVID. And many of those mistakes proved to be absolutely tragic. And we'll be paying the, the, the price for this for decades to come. Yes, yes. Okay, so paying the price. Final question we have uh, here is paying the price. You have a regime that kept the January 6th footage from the American people. Now, I am not going to sit here and talk about things of which I don't know right now, right? I haven't seen all the footage. But 
do you agree with this move to give the footage to Tucker Carlson to let sunlight be the best disinfectant? Absolutely, I do. Uh, uh, it, it needs to happen. They needed to uh, hand that over. And I look forward to the findings because, look, they have lied to us about so many things. Uh, our, our own government has lied to us about so many things. We deserve to know the truth. And I do wonder why all of it has been a key, kept a secret this long. Uh, these were, in fact, um, uh, you know, uh, surveillance tapes made of public places. I, I don't understand why they couldn't have been released earlier. It makes me a little suspicious. I have a feeling we will find out why they didn't want these things disclosed pretty soon. All right. Well, we always take uh, audience questions. We have uh, one for you now. We've gotten thousands, but uh, our producer has surfaced this question. Here we go. Uh, what do we got here? If Biden laughs at the deaths, uh, at deaths before his administration, what does he have to say about the ones that are happening during his administration? This is talking about the f mother with the uh, child who died from fentanyl. It does seem particularly craven to, like, chuckle about these things. It was craven. It was one of the most insulting, disturbing, disgusting things I've ever seen. I mean, uh, who does that? Who, who, let you, he, who, who laughs at such a tragedy like that? Um, so, look, um, the Joe Biden that people knew in the Senate many years ago, um, not always the most cautious guy, not always mm -hmm. a guy that you and I would have agreed with, but he wouldn't have stooped to this. Something's terribly wrong there. I, I, he's not well. Anyone who would laugh in response to a mother who lost two children to fentanyl poisoning, uh, there's something not right with him, and I, I intend to find out what's going on there. Uh, that is uh, absolutely unacceptable. Now, I could be wrong. He may have issued an apology already, but if he has, I haven't seen it. The fact yes. that there has not been a profound, profuse apology issued by the White House and by President Biden himself so far is inexcusable. Yes, inexcusable. There's so many inexcusable things. I, I don't envy your job, Senator. I don't. I, I, you, you, there's so much to go after. We have members of the Weaponization Committee on with regularity. There's so much to go after right now. Uh, you're spoiled for choice, I suppose. Uh, but we deeply appreciate your fight. And you had, I believe, the best line of question, the most emph emphatic line of questioning for Merrick Garland. We thought that was very important. Uh, let's toss Base Mike Lee up on screen one more time. Please follow Base Mike Lee. Elon Musk responded saying you were based this week. That's a huge W, Senator. And what further proof do we need, Benny, that I am based <laughs> than that Elon Musk himself described to me as based? It's fantastic. <laughs> Just before we go, can you please give us a little summary of what happened this week? And then everyone go follow this account. Yeah, so, all right, so uh, Wednesday morning, uh, here I am minding my own business. I, I think it was in the Garland hearing, and I received notification at some point that I had been removed, that I'd been deplatformed. My account had been frozen or suspended or whatever it is on Twitter. And I was rushing in between meetings. And so uh, I sent a few texts, a few emails, things like that. Within a few hours, they got me taken down. The explanation they offered uh, uh, through Elon Musk is the most thorough one that I've heard, the only one that I've heard, which is that, you know, somebody reported it as a uh, as an imposter account and they believed it and then they realized their mistake and they took it down. So uh, but I do wonder, I do wonder why exactly they did that. Uh, you know, people who follow me who don't like me uh, could have done this at any point. Why did they do yes. it then? Yes. I, I've wondered whether they were upset that I was about to give a speech railing on Japan for its mistreatment of U.S. Navy Lieutenant Ridge Alconis, who's languishing in a Japanese prison for having experienced a medical emergency resulting in a car accident. And uh, perhaps they didn't like it. Perhaps somebody, uh, somebody else in collusion with the Department of Defense did that. But uh, one way or another, I'm glad Musk got me back on. It's so much better to live in the Elon Musk era than the Jack Dorsey era. Yeah, yeah, sincerely. And thank you so much for bringing attention to that. And let's let's do another segment on that because that is a, a hugely important story. You're one of the only people talking about it. Uh, thank you so very much, Senator, for being on the program. At Elon Musk endorsed, based, Mike Lee. Thanks so much, Benny. <laughs>
don't think he's ever run for president. Maybe he will someday. Well, we are pretty sure Ron DeSantis is going to run for president. DeSantis will be visiting Iowa next week before 2024 bid. That follows Trump also announcing that he will be visiting Iowa. Iowa will be the first in the nation caucuses, the Iowa caucuses. Democrats have cut Iowa out because, well, Iowa is not a machine state that just delivers the results they want with James Clyburn saying, go vote for this guy. They saved Joe Biden's candidacy in 2020. It would have been Bernie Sanders. Woof. We would have loved to have seen that, by the way. I mean, we're not Bernie bros, but that would have been uh, that would have been so entertaining. What? Remember what they stole from us. The Bernie Trump debates would have been things of legend. Uh, but Ron DeSantis will be heading to Davenport and Iowa City, Iowa, on March 10th next week. We'll be covering that. Donald Trump will be heading to Iowa um, mid-March, uh, according to Breitbart article. So things are heating up. Nikki Haley, Vivek Ranshwamy have also announced uh, Vivek is supposed to be joining the program next week sometime. So we'll see. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have plans for everyone to be joining the program, for you to be able to ask them questions. So stay tuned. Speaking of good news, we always try and end our uh, show on a good news story. Deion Sanders being attacked by an atheist group, legendary athlete, now the coach of uh, the University of Colorado football team. Uh, Deion Sanders being attacked for being religious. That's right, for being a Christian. He's a coach, not a pastor. Atheist group takes aim at Deion Sanders expressing his religious beliefs. Atheist group has spoken out against Colorado head coach Deion Sanders and his habits of bringing his deep Christian faith into his coaching. And now Christian groups are saying to Sanders, uh, side uh, to defend his right to express those beliefs. Now a Christian group is rallying to Sanders' side to defend those rights to express his religious beliefs. The Freedom From Religion Foundation has sent a letter to the University of Colorado claiming that it is, it is illegal for a school employee such as Sanders to voice their religious sentiments to students and told the school to remind Sanders that they are supposed to be constitutional duties under the Establishment Clause. Oh, very interesting. Funny how anti-Christian groups can roam the streets of any college campus, can have professorships, can teach their own brand of religion, their climate cult and their Marxist cults to our children, uh, their uh, radical se uh, sexual ideology cults to our children. Ever, ever so much the tenets of religious fervor inside of these cults. Uh, don't you dare attack their high priests like Dr. Fauci or Dylan Mulvaney, you'll get the sword. They, they'll they call you an infidel and stage a crusade against you. They're staging a crusade against Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders uh, does not seem to be backing down. Sanders has for years been very open and vocal about his deep religious faith, and the school uh, cannot claim to be surprised by his public sentiment. At, the point, at this point, though, it does seem like everyone is in a wait-and-see mode, uh, for Deion Sanders, we encourage Deion Sanders to keep your faith, keep the faith. Deion Sanders, um, quite frankly, you have religious freedom in this country. That extends uh, to what injections the government tries to put into your body. That extends to your place of work. That extends to your place of worship. That extends beyond the Biden administration's uh, craven and demonic attempts to try and track you in church or try and put you in jail for your religious beliefs. As Mike Lee just said, they see religious people as extremists and the enemy. Because, of course, because religious people take away their power. So we encourage Deion Sanders, keep staying based. Stay based in your faith. And come here someday, anytime. You are welcome in the studio. You can teach the good word to Rolls-Royce, who is our studio tech here, and teach him about David and Saul and the King Saul. Royce needs to brush up a little bit on his Old Testament. But... Ladies and gentlemen, we have Old Testament verses for you this morning from Lamentations. <laughs> the Lord is good unto them who wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. We hope that you seek the Lord this weekend. We hope that you wait and are in peace this weekend and enjoy this, the greatest country on earth, America. And it is the greatest country because we have our priorities straight. God, family, country. We will fight for this place deserves to be fought for, and it's always been fought for by good people, and we have victory in the end. So go into this weekend encouraged 
and uplifted. Your boy Benny, we got you here. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.